Hello, I'm David Oliver and welcome to video number 22. Again, I have stage 4 terminal cancer. And I couldn't get through this journey if it wasn't for my number one caregiver, my wife Debbie. And she's had some very important things to share with you today. So I've learned a great deal over the last two years in trying to help David through this process and, and take care of him. And so I thought I'd share a little bit about what I have learned. One of the main things I've learned is that you have to be an advocate for this person that you love. Even an educated, uh, self-confident person like David, it seems once they get into the healthcare system and they're not feeling well, they just melt in that system. And suddenly he forgets to ask questions, forgets what's important, or sometimes minimizes uh, his feelings and doesn't end up getting what he needs. So at that point, it becomes up to me to try to help. Okay, I have come up with four prerequisites that I think will help you get through this. The first one is to be present. To understand and not ever underestimate the value of you just being there in that healthcare encounter. The one time that I wasn't there in a healthcare encounter is the one time, of course, that we had a problem. Your clear mind, your extra set of eyes, your extra set of ears can be very, very important as more information is shared than what most people can absorb in a short period of time. For instance, when we were in the hospital or in the chemotherapy room and people were, staff were teaching and, and sharing information, they're focusing on lots of people and sometimes they'll forget to say one thing or another or they won't notice something going on with your loved one. And nobody knows your loved one like you do and so you can just focus on that one person. As Dr. Byrock says, unless you are confident that your loved one will get everything they need, you need to be there. Do not leave them alone. The second thing is to be prepared. Be prepared for the unexpected. It's kind of like when you're a new mom and you develop your little toolkit in your diaper bag with all the things you need to prevent disaster. This is the same thing. We've learned that I need to carry some extra doses of morphine because sometimes we forget or sometimes the um, pain happens unexpectedly and we need some of the, um, the time release, the intermittent uh, emergency dose as we call it. Band-Aids, Zofran for nausea and vomiting have also been helpful and actually had I had it one time we could have prevented an emergency room visit. The other thing to be prepared and armed with are lab values. Know what's normal, know what they are, and know at what point you need to do something. Um, that will also help you advocate. Thirdly, be patient. Be patient not only with the healthcare system, but be patient with this person with whom you love. Being patient with the healthcare system means sometimes you need to set some boundaries, which means if I don't hear back when I call the doctor by 4 o'clock, I'm going to call back again because I know they leave at 4.30. So making that boundary up front to myself will help alleviate anxiety when it gets to be 3.30 and I'm trying to decide what I should do. With my loved one, when I'm with David, I also set boundaries. For instance, when he's throwing up in the bathroom and not wanting to go to the emergency room, we set a limit and said, okay, one more time and you're going in before you're completely dehydrated. He agreed. Sure enough, he threw up again and off we went to the emergency room before he was completely dehydrated because previously we had waited too long. Finally, be persistent in all things. If you know that something is not right, if you're not getting what your loved one needs, then don't give up. Don't quit. Just keep at it as politely as possible, but don't wear down. Keep asking questions. It's going to feel uncomfortable, but it's very important. And you have a lot more strength for that encounter than your loved one may have. So again, let me reiterate these four points. Be present, be prepared, be patient, and be persistent. Caregivers are the ones that have the strength and the clear head. You have to make decisions also in order to make their exit strategy happen the way that they choose to. Since it's football season, I'm going to use a football analogy, and we've done it before, that caregivers are like quarterbacks. So as a quarterback, don't let yourself get sacked. Don't drop the ball. The stakes are very high. Don't fear. The love that you have for this person 
is going to get you through and you're going to do a great job. Love and courage. That's what it's all about. And go Tigers.